has a radio show right here in Columbia, WIC. If you haven't heard it, you should tune into it, 7 o'clock on Sunday nights. Dr. Gene Garris is the host of America's Radio Show. I've listened to this show. I've been on this show a couple of times. America's Radio Show and Dr. Garris are what I would call 100% freedom and liberty. Please welcome Dr. Gene Garris. Well, I'm a radio guy and a liberty activist. And I got a, I got a question for you. Where do your rights come from? God. They come from God. And who stands between you and God? Oh the enemy! So what in the world are we allowing to happen in our country? Great people. Okay, here's a question for you. If your forefathers, and maybe not, maybe you came from another country. If the people that created this great experiment gave up their life, their liberty, their treasure, and their sacred honor to make this happen, might that be worth fighting for? Yes. yes. What in the world are we doing? What kind of bizarro world did we wake up in? We have an American president that has a kill list. President Nixon had an enemies list and we impeached him. What in the world are we doing in our country? Yes. Well, that's, that, that's, a, that's a start. <laughs> but we got all sorts of little Obamas. We know where their office building is. We know where they hang out. <laughs> that's They're right. right here. And one of the other speakers brought up a good uh, thing. I had a friend of mine from Leola, Pennsylvania, in Lancaster County, called me up and said, What's it like living in the reddest state of the Union? And I said, unfortunately, I had to say this, I had to admit this to my friend, that we're not a Republican state, we're a planter class state. The same 400 families have been running this whole thing for 400 years. So you look at the principles that they say, they oh, we're pro-life. Well, why haven't you made a change? We care about you, we support this, we're in your church sometimes campaigning. <laughs> Why don't you ever enact anything that you say you're going to? Because it doesn't matter. It's about the power. Do you believe Hugh Leatherman is a Republican? No. How in the world did that happen? I, I, obviously, we need some sort of test. Grover Norquist has a test. He has a pledge. Would you support a Second Amendment pledge? Something concrete that we can say, no, you signed a pledge. This wishy-washy stuff you're doing doesn't work. You signed a pledge. Would you be willing to put a pledge before all these people? Yeah. Maybe that's what, you know, why does the mainstream media hate Grover Norquist's pledge so much? It's because it's measurable. Because you can say, you lied, you didn't do it. You signed up to protect us and you decided not to. You made the decision. You promised us and you lie. And that happens all the time here. Actually, looking over here, uh, three windows back is my old office. Sort of the way down the building. My first job out of college, that was part of the problem, I think. <laughs> now, if you look at the, I guess it's uh, Article 1, Section 20 of the South Carolina Constitution, it pretty much mimics the Second Amendment. Now, I've been to castles in uh, England, Scotland, and Wales, and I know what a keep is. A keep is a place you put something that you want to have. Amen. And I have an idea of what to bear is. It means that you can present, that you can show somebody something. So if the national constitution says we have the right to keep firearms, and we have the right to bear them, and these jokers, they say that we have the right to keep firearms and to bear them. Why can't we keep firearms and bear them right where you're standing? That's right. A lot of great people, a lot of great people are working on uh, legislation to fix problems in the code, to change the way that the, uh, the government addresses firearms and everything else. And we've had some disappointing stuff with our uh, Attorney General just a moment ago. You found out just a moment ago. 
But why doesn't a Republican Attorney General address the state constitution and say, in my opinion, since we have the right to keep arms and the right to bear arms, that South Carolina is a universal carry state, that we have constitutional carry from the national constitution and from our own constitution. That's the problem. He's got lots of backbone. He's got too much backbone. He's able to do it. Again, he's, uh, you know, the drone wars and the, uh, you know, the, we're just in a horrible, horrible, horrible state. And we know how this works. Why are our friends on the left so engineered, so uh, attractive? Why do they want to get rid of our guns? We know how this works. You have registration, then you have con then you have uh, confiscation, and then you have concentration, and then you have the train depot, and you know what the rest of the story is. Why do they sign up for that? These people that are touchy, that are feely, that want the best for our children, why would they have anything to do with that? It's because they're evil. That's it, it's they're evil. And uh, we talked uh, a little bit, so, I mean, gosh, the speakers here have been excellent. And I, I'm just, uh, you know, as one of the wrap-up people, I'm really happy to, to be here. Uh, but when we we look at this stuff and what motivates a politician, why do the retired, why do the uh, money, money's the big one, power, it's all about power. This whole thing, this edifice, everything that you see here, everything that you gaze upon from this highest point in Columbia, it's all about power. And why do, why do our older people, why do our older people, why do our senior citizens get what they want? They show up. It's a big sacrifice. Every one of you, and I, I'm going to make a guess, pretty much every one of you left something to come here. Now, I work for myself, so I have some freedom. Not everybody works for themselves. If you have to, one of the problems with this uh, joke of an election we had recently is you can't say to your boss, hey, i got to go vote, I'll be back in an hour, when it takes you five hours to vote. But one advantage that the older people in our country have, or older people in our state have, is that they can wait in their office. They can come visit. And when the secretary says, I'm sorry, he's in a meeting, bring your book and say, I'll wait. And, and if you want to make a difference, if you send an email, that has an effect. If you make a phone call, that has an effect. If you write a letter, that has a little bit more of an effect because somebody has to do something with it. If you show up in their office, it has one big heck of an effect. So if you, if you can do it, if you can do it. If you work for somebody else and you say, well, there's some stuff going on, I want to go down to the Capitol, you don't even have to tell them. So take your, instead of taking that to vacation day on a Friday, take it on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. And go hang out in one of, uh, one of your friend's uh, places. You know, it could be your senator, it could be somebody else's senator, it could be a rep. And find out what they really think. Because here, if they were here, they promise you the world. They would promise everything but they'll never deliver because there's somebody else that can uh, pad their wallet. There's somebody else that can give them that little bit of power that they want. Well, that's, a, that's it. But I, I like agendas. I like it when I say, hey, that's a guy that wants to preserve liberty, or I know that that's a guy that has a gun issue, or that's a guy that's a pro-life person. I like knowing that. But it doesn't matter. These people profess one thing, and they do much, much, much more. And I want to talk about the Sandy Hook for a second. Why are we only finding out now that the long gun never made it into the school? That's right. That's right. Perception is reality. That's right. Perception is reality. So when the national story came out and we saw on television or YouTube, I watch YouTube a lot, uh, we saw a police officer remove a long gun from the trunk of the car. But the medical examiner said all the children were murdered with the long gun. It was a lie! It was a lie! Because the murders didn't fit the president's agenda. So, so how can we know anything? We can't. How can we trust them? We can't. That's right. So that's, that's, you know, I talk about this 
every, this type of stuff all the time because it just burns me up. Because we have such a, I mean, we, if you've traveled anywhere in the world, if you've just visited the wild spaces of South Carolina, you know we live in one of the most beautiful, greatest places on the planet. And, and it is, God has given us this. And every person, you know, whether you're here in Richland County or Richmond, Virginia or Rwanda, God has given you the power, uh, has given you the right to self-defense. And uh, it just annoys me to no end that we have to have rallies, that we have to uh, continually invest our treasure, and we have to fight here in the land. Thank God for uh, good people like Bill Rentier, that we have to continually fight to keep what God gave us. Now, this is sort of an aside. I've been married twice. Twice to the same woman, which is a really positive thing. The first time we got married, I had to go to Richland County with my wife, with my bride, and we had to sign up for a, a, a marriage license. Now, all the time, the left beats us up about separation of church and state. And we know how the Constitution says it's separation of state from church. In every religion, whether you're, uh, you know, uh, Orthodox Christian, Evangelical Christian, Baptist, whatever you are, if you're a Jewish person or any religion in the world, in every religion, marriage is a sacrament of the church. So if we have separation of church and state, why do I need to get a license to get married? So, so that's where we are. And, and on the face of, of all these things, you know, I wish... I wish I could convey to you all the things I feel and what I think is important, as well as uh, one of Oleg Volk's uh, photographs, the guy that takes excellent photos. But I was at the SHOT Show uh, most recently in uh, January, and I came back from media day at the range, and I was sitting uh, across the aisle from two Canadian journalists. And they said the way it works in Canada is that you are sort of a perceived criminal and that you have to have a permit, you, you have to be licensed, and all the guns have to be licensed. And the thing that they did not want to see here for us is for us to go the way of Canada. And what can happen here is we can do away with the gun show loophole. We can do away with face-to-face -face, uh, uh, transactions. We can require everybody to have a background check. And what will happen is we'll have universal <laughs> registration, and then, well, a universal copy is coming. And then, and then in a political season when the country is worried about something else, we will have a new law that says uh, this class of weapon cannot be transferred to an individual. So your grandfather's gun collection, that uh, American sporting rifle that uh, you know you pull the trigger once and a bullet pops out the end, you pull it again, another bullet pops out of the end. That gun, anything that would be reasonable to have so that you could defend yourself, that gun will be non-transferable, and that's how they'll get. It. You know, we already have. Uh, I don't want to uh, fight the uh, criminal domestic violence thing. <coughs> But in what kind of world can you have a constitutional right, a right given to you by God, taken away because somebody else files a police report? What's up with that? Why didn't somebody say, hey, you can't take that guy's gun because he got a fight with his wife or this girl says he did something or the other way around? So even on the face of it, these people, these people, are undermining our rights given by God. And again, I, I want to tell you, we know how it ends. We know we can look at the, all the different things. So uh, we'll go through the group list. Our uh, people in Turkey, you know, we have a NATO ally in Turkey. Well, they only murdered one and a half million Armenians after uh, gun con confiscation. Soviet Union only killed, what, 20 million of their people after gun confiscation? And our, uh, you know, our uh, Nazi, uh, one thing I say, we have to push back now. Because if we're not, if we don't push back now, we're going to have to push back and it's going to be really ugly. And if my grandparents, you know, all my grandparents did was defeat the uh, uh, Empire of Japan, fascist Italy, and the Nazis. So I'm going to give them a pass. But if we had fought, if we had pushed back on the uh, uh, 
the national uh, weapons law of the 34 or whatever, we'd be in much better shape. We wouldn't have to push back now. If we had pushed back, if my parents had pushed back in 64, we'd be in much shape, better shape now. We need to push back now before we're filling bottles with gasoline and throwing stuff. We need to fix the problem now. All right, now, there, there might go, God forbid, God forbid, uh, and, and this will be a, a, a closing, uh, a quick statement. God forbid that uh, everything falls apart. But remember, when the agents are knocking at your door in the middle of the night for confiscations, and they say, give me your guns, remember it's muzzle first. <laughs> Dr. Gene Garrett, Mercy Radio Show.